Welcome to the Beatdown Report. Welcome back to the Beatdown Report. We have been on a little bit of a break, which we sorely needed here, I believe, at uh, Rick Cave Media Headquarters. It is July 13th, the day before Bastille Day. Is it, wait, it's not the 14th yet, is it? No, it's the 13th. So tomorrow's the 14th, yeah. Tomorrow's the day before yep. this. Is, this is like Bastille Day Eve. This is when... This is when a French person jumps down your chimney and uh, frees, frees the captives of your particular house. If you have captives, you should probably let them out. You should probably let them out. Otherwise, because when the revolution comes, you will not be spared. Uh, anyway, yeah, welcome. Welcome back. We've, our last show when we were we were at Leprechaun. Uh, we, uh, we interviewed some science fiction authors. It was a good time. And that was back in, like, what, May? Yeah, with, with me in the studio today, by the way, is uh, Jen Buzz, the Brick Cave Media promotions guru extraordinaire. She, she, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of things that have happened in the last in the last uh, month and a half. More specific, we're gonna focus on 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 a, on a couple of controversial things, couple couple crazy things that have happened. Uh, first off, though, let's talk about uh, the really important thing that's going on in the world today. Uh, let's talk about uh, the potato salad Kickstarter. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about this. I'm sure you have. If, if you if you're listening to the show, you probably have. You probably got a good bead on social media. You probably got a good, you know, take on on the world. And uh, so the potato salad Kickstarter. If you don't know, some dude decided that he was going to. By the way, his name is Zach Danger Brown, and what he decided he was going to do was uh he was gonna make a potato salad but he was also gonna gonna make fun of kickstarter and indiegogo and and which deserves to be made fun of i i've put out a kickstarter here or there to to fund my trips to the national poetry slam i have seen my friends put out kickstarters to fire off books or projects you know art projects and stuff and it's a really good crowdsourcing crowdfunding tool it allows you the artist to achieve things that maybe you wouldn't normally be able to because you're poor. And and let's face it, that's what this really is. A Kickstarter is basically telling your friends to give you money for you to do something fun. Uh, right. We're we're. By the way, uh, well, I want to get. Uh, don't don't. I know we will get. We will get to this. We will get to the pipe cleaners. I, I that that is a that is foreshadowing to the upcoming parts of the show. The pipe cleaners that we have in front of us. But the Kickstarter thing. Um, so this guy basically says, I'm going to make a potato salad and I'm asking for $10 to make potato salad. He puts it up on Kickstarter and within, I think like a week, he had something north of $5,000 in donations. And remember he was asking for 10. So he basically fulfilled his Kickstarter by like, you know, what? 5,000% or something like that. And the media picked up it as is the media's want. Cause the media always talks about. They always have that that story at the end of this. You know, it's like, on Channel 12 News today, uh, I'm Kent Dana, and we've got 12 homicides in the city, and a uh, plane crashed outside of out of uh, Cleveland, and oh my, look at these cute little puppies. We'll get to them at the end of the news. It's kind of like the, the, uh, the, the sugar, but they give you the sugar after they give you the medicine. So they, they basically jammed all this horrible stuff down your throat, and then they give you a human interest story. So the news has been all over the potato salad Kickstarter. And that, of course, led to it snowballing. So as of today, I believe they are at $47,000 for potato salad. And it's controversial online. It, it, a lot of people are, it, it, it's very much dividing the communities that I watch. Because some people, Scott Woods, friend of the show, former head of Poetry Slam Incorporated, a Brick Cave Media author, and all around great guy. Uh, he put out this great... Uh, commentary online, which basically ends with uh, forty nine thousand, forty nine thousand three hundred sixty six dollars. That's crazy. Uh, but uh, but uh, Scott Woods put this commentary about the the dude putting out the Kickstarter for potato salad is not taking money out of your pocket because if you were the kind of person who is going to donate money to a potato salad Kickstarter, you could probably give a shit about art. You 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 like trucker hats and you like cans of PBR, and you like your Galaxy Five Thousand T-shirt, 
that you got at the vintage store, but you probably don't care that much about sending a team to the National Poetry Slam or funding. Uh, and this, and this, I'm gonna actually do a, do a shout out for someone, um, Sonia Renee. She is a poet out of the Bay Area right now. Uh, Oakland, I believe, is her home base, and she is running a, a Kickstarter for her project. It's called "The Body Is Not an Apology." Uh, actually, yeah, well, that's that's the group that she belongs to, the group that she founded, and she's basically trying to raise funds to create a. She calls it radical self love. Basically, the concept of the body is not an apology, as I understand it, is that everyone should be comfortable in their skin and should love them for who they are, not necessarily what other people want them to be, whether it be the media or their peer group or what have you. And it's a worthwhile cause, and you should check it out. Uh, it's actually, if you do a search on When We Say Yes, it'll take you to the webpage. Um, just search on When We Say Yes, the body is not an apology. We might even throw up a link on the on the Kickstarter, on the, on the webpage for the beatdown report. But she, she was very upset um, at one point. And uh, it's hard, well, I shouldn't say very upset. It's hard to gauge how people are online by just reading text. But for about a day, she was just throwing up the potato salad Kickstarter with various hashtags, some of which seemed to divide her readership. Some people were like, you know, this, this is important. What you're, and it is important what she's doing. But some people were, you know, it's important that you're showing them the the switch between uh, the switch between, you know, bodies on apology funding something that's worthwhile versus funding a potato salad Kickstarter. And I think it got into a, a place where I it got very political, where the concepts of white privilege were being talked about and concepts of you know, whether or not people have access to funding from banks and such that they wouldn't normally have. And that's where Kickstarter has. So this guy throwing up the Kickstarter is kind of like diminishing what they're doing. And I disagree with that. I think Kickstarter can be used for a very worthwhile project, can also be worked out as a goof. I mean, I will I will say this. When you, you fund a team on po for to go to a poetry slam, you are helping the artists. Let's say, I don't have one this year. I'm going to the National Poetry Slam. I'm not putting up a Kickstarter this year because I just I have the money and I don't necessarily want to take it out of my friends' pockets. But you're ultimately saying, I appreciate what you're doing and I want to help you out, which is good. But you're also saying, this is something that you're going to enjoy doing. You're basically funding their vacation. Because that's what it is. I mean, Poetry Slam, yeah, it, there's a professional aspect to it. You go and you do workshops and you do, go and you listen to other people read and you expose yourself to new thoughts and you create a better format for yourself to get out there into the public mindset. But ultimately, you're taking a week off from real life. For 95, 98% of all the poets are out there. 98% of the poets are not making a living doing poetry. They are not, as Buddy Wakefield would say, living for a living. They are working for a living. And Poetry Slam was a way for them to kind of express their artistic side. And that's all well and good. But again, basically, you're paying them to take a vacation. You're paying them to go to sunny Oakland, California to... To be a rock star for a week, which there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with, with Sonia Renee asking for money to start a website to do something that's good for the community. You know, this that kind of shit doesn't come free. But don't get pissed off when someone funds a potato salad. Because that's awesome for, as far as I'm concerned. I think that is the most amazing thing Uh that this dude out there, and hopefully he does something else with the money other than make potato salad. Hopefully he gives some to a food bank or, or something like that. But if he didn't, fuck him. I don't, what, what, what do we care? Is, is your life diminished because he has $49,000 to make a potato salad? You just, it, it, it comes to a point of jealousy, and there comes to a point. And yes, you can talk about the mechanics of white privilege. Would this person have gotten as much money if they were not a straight white male? with a goofy hat and a, and a, you know, name like Zach danger Brown, you know, that that's, we'll never know that, you know, we, we, we can, we have not, com we have not completed our, our alternate dimension traveling machine yet here at the B town report. We hope to soon, but it's not ready yet. Almost there. Almost there. My producer, by the way, Johnny Skinner, you know, yeah, we really, we really should be working on that rather than, you know, mm -hmm. podcasting. We could do a lot more mm -hmm. with the time machine. I wish my friend Joy was here right now because we have a time machine joke and uh, uh, only she'd get it. But yes. So yeah, don't basically don't hate. 
That's all I can say. Enjoy. Make yourself a potato salad. Eat eat forty nine thousand dollars worth of potato salad, and uh, sit back and, and relax. I mean, there's lots of people out there I don't like that are 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 making money and doing things. You know, uh, I could name. I will name because you know I'm not. I'm not. I directly challenge the people who piss me off. So I'm going to say this right now. Apollo Poetry, terrible person. Don't like him. He occasionally makes money. And that shouldn't be. He should be living in a cardboard box down by the street, cleaning windshields, jerking off guys for money. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't mean that. I don't mean that. That's so There's nothing wrong with sex work. And if he wants to jerk off guys for money, that's good for him. But uh, see, we have been gone for a while, and I'm just kind of letting everything out. This is the pressure valve. But there's other people I don't like. There's people. They they there there are five of them I don't like. They are sitting on the Supreme Court right now. How's that for a segue? Let's talk about Justice Scalia jerking off guys two at a time for money, shall we? No. So yeah, while I was gone, the Supreme Court just made a made a decision, and uh, they did not consult with me. I did not agree with it, and uh, yeah, it is unfortunate. Um, what uh, they have decided was in the case of I think it's I don't know if the exact case is like Hobby Lobby versus Obama or Hobby Lobby versus the federal government or Bur- Hobby Lobby versus general fucking common sense. Burwell versus Hobby Lobby. Burwell versus Hobby Bur- Lobby. Okay. Yes. Who's Burwell? Do we know who Burwell is? Let's find out. So uh, what they decided was basically that corporations not only are people, but corporations can have a deeply held religious belief. Which is weird. One of the things, and I noticed that this is a big thing on the right after there's a couple of people. One of them, uh, his name is uh, Kurt Schlichter. Kurt Schlichter. He is on Twitter. I just look up his name. It sounds exactly like it's spelled. Um. He was talking about the decision, and he kept uh, trolling uh, people who were opposed to it by telling people that they were against free speech if they did not agree, or against the First Amendment, if they did not agree that Hobby Lobby had an inherent right to express religious beliefs. Hobby Lobby is a construct. Hobby Lobby is not you or me or Jen or Johnny or Apollo Hobby Lobby is a thing. It is a store where you can buy cheaply made goods from the Far East, from China and Taiwan and Vietnam and all these other places that don't value labor costs as much as we do by paying them less of a shitty wage. Um, but it is not a person. Uh, I, I think there should be a... Well, let, let's go back to the decision real quick. What Hobby Lobby for the, or Burwell v. Hobby Lobby decision said is that a corporation, if it holds a closely held religious belief and it is a closely held company, meaning that the I think it's like a certain amount of the company's ownership, whether it be stock or private uh, control, is held by a small group of individuals. And in the case of Hobby Lobby, it is owned by one family. Um, where they are the majority shareholders, if it's even a publicly traded company at all. Quite frankly, I didn't look that up. But if you, let's say I started a business and I was the only person who was involved in making the decisions and I had full ownership of the company and I decided that I wanted everyone to wear a specific hat because my God is a very fancy God and he likes everyone to wear jaunty hats. If you decided that you did not want to wear a hat, whether your your own God does not like hats or whether or not you think the concept of God is ridiculous and, and why should you wear a hat? I could fire you, or, or alternately, I could force you to wear the hat, and that would be a particular belief that is protected under Burwell v. Hobby Lobby because it is closely held, and I closely hold the company. Now, the Supreme Court tried and failed, I think, to split the baby because what they did was they said that it only applies to birth control. Or as we like to call them here on the show, whore pills. Because that's apparently what the Supreme Court decides that they are. Hobby Lobby, they're Roman Catholic, and they don't believe in birth control. The Roman Roman Catholic Church doesn't believe in birth control. 
And if they were not wanting to use birth control themselves, that's fine. If they, as the owners of Hobby Lobby, wanted to fund pro birth control, anti anti birth control ads, flyers, shout about it on the street corner, put up signs in their stores, that would not be a problem. I would not have a problem with that. But what they are doing is they are enforcing their religious beliefs on others through a non-entity. And people like Kurt Schlichter and people on the right say, well, that's, you know, it's it the company is an extension of them. No, it it really isn't. A company is a construct that is licensed and controlled by the government. Because remember, in this country, to run a business, you have to have a business license. There's all kinds of hoops you have to jump through. Whether or not that's right, that's a system that we live in. And I think for the most part, it works out well, because that way you don't have rapacious companies just kind of tearing apart uh, what they want, when they want, without the government kind of putting the brakes on it. We've seen what happens when we take the brakes off. That was called the robber baron era, laissez-faire. And, you know, that's where you got you know, one railroad company and the standard oil. And we saw what happened and that didn't work. So the government had to step in and they had to tell individual people how to run their business. You know, the McKinley, the president McKinley didn't walk over to a, you know, a formless blob called standard oil and say, Oh, by the way, you can't be the only oil company anymore. He went to Flagler and he went to DuPont and he went to all these other people and said, Hey, by the way, your business, you're running it this way. Suck it up or don't do business. And what did everyone do? They sucked it up. So the Supreme Court's kind of turned that on their head. And what, what I think was really interesting was that the people who decided, it was a 5-4 decision. You had Scalia and Alito and Thomas and Robertson Kennedy, who are five men, who are all Roman Catholic, which is interesting. And yet, on the other side, you had uh, Ginsburg and Sotomayor and Kagan. Kagan? She's on the Supreme Court? I think so. I don't know. I, I And uh, Stevens. I know he was the other one. But they all decided that uh, the on the opposite, that Hobby Lobby did not have the right to do that. And what's the difference? Well, you had five dudes and then uh, four, and you had three women and one dude against Hobby Lobby. And everyone, every woman here... Every woman listening to the sound of my voice, because I am, I'm, I'm going to bring someone in here real quick, because I am not, you, you as a woman should not be listening to me about this, because I'm a dude. I don't have to worry about spitting out babies. As we've shown in this country, a man can just, you know, get pregnant or get the woman pregnant, and then he has to get to sit back for nine months and not do anything. It's her job. It's her job to raise the child. It's my job, if I had parent, if I was parent, and I'm not. But it's my job to dole out the fatherly wisdom while tapping out my pipe and wearing my slippers and saying, "Well, son, I'm glad you came to you about this question, or 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 daughter. Actually, I should just send the daughter to the mom because that's her problem. But <laughs> so let's bring an actual woman into this discussion. Let's bring on Brick Cave Media PR guru Jen LaBuzz. Hi, Jen. Hi. What do you need to know? Well, I, I'm going to ask you some questions, and, and you're going to tell me if I'm okay. right or wrong. All right. It's really easy being a woman, right? <laughs> I mean, you just sit back, and guys bring you stuff. Yeah, and, all, all the time. And and, yeah, and then and then we, dis, we, we give you our sage, scholarly wisdom about how you should run your life. Yes. So you guys just, got, you just sit back. I mean, right, you, I just sit back and let them say, okay, this yeah. is how it's going to be. And I think the, the Supreme Court appreciates your your decision to do yes. that. So, uh, Jen, what do, what do we have in front of us today? What do we have here? Uh, we have some pipe cleaners. And, now, these were bought from Hobby Lobby? or No, these are from Michaels. Michaels. Michaels does not give a shit about whether or not you have birth control. Is that true? You know, I don't know. I, I See, think they I ha haven't. That's the interesting point. Um, Michaels and Joanne and other craft stores have not said anything pro or con to this. So Really? Yeah. Maybe they think that it's a woman's decision on her alone to decide whether what she wants to... Take birth control or not? Uh, yeah, that would be great. And, you know. But we have some pipe cleaners here. And what I'm making right now is I'm making a Hobby Lobby pipe cleaner or hanger pal. 
because now if you can't get <laughs> you can't get an abortion yeah, or you my... can't get birth control, you may have to have an abortion. But they probably wouldn't pay for that either. I've got my hanger shirt. Yeah, she's got a lovely shirt, which is which is a I can't I can't I can't do I can't make a hanger out of pipe cleaner. That's how hanger. pathetic I am. Uh, but she's got a lovely shirt, which you're going to see online after the show, which is <laughs> it, it's it's a Hobby Lobby pipe cleaner pal, and it, it's a it's a it's googly eyes and a hanger, and that's what pipe that's what Hobby Lobby wants you to use now for. Yeah. Birth control. But let's go back to the idea of corporate personhood. Am I wrong in assuming... Let, let, let's do a thought experiment. You, as a woman, go to your doctor, mm -hmm. and you have a particular medical decision to make. Let, let's take birth control off the pill. Let's say it's medical condition X that you're okay. dealing with. The decision between you and your doctor... Do you want anyone getting involved in it? Be it government, be it an insurance bureaucrat, be it your boss? No. Who do you think in the grand scheme of of everything of of dealing let's say let's go to that structure. It's you and your doctor, and then you have the insurance company, the government, and your boss. Rank in that order who you feel is going to be as a woman, as an individual, yeah. let's say. Not even as a woman, but okay. as an individual. Who am I ranking? You're ranking insurance company, government, and your boss. Who do you think would be more likely to protect your, your right to work with your doctor? Is this a trick question? This is not a trick question. <laughs> I, I'm actually generally um, you know, I'm, uh, curious as, hmm. to see where I am because I got my answer, but... Based on one condition, I'll have to go with government only because insurance company and boss would be interested in the finance. And I was going to say the same thing. I don't. I don't want government running my life. I don't want government telling me what to eat, what to drink. Because I, 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 I've been drinking Singapore slings pretty much nonstop for the last three days when I'm not at work. Hmm. But, but. Uh, I, I think the government is the bulwark against my boss telling me I, the last person I want involved in my medical decisions is my boss. I don't want him knowing. Yes. I don't want my I want my boss knowing as little about me as possible. Yes, and definitely. The insurance company. I've already kind of because it's insurance. I've already kind of accepted the the fact that I have to keep them involved in all my decisions because they're the ones writing the checks to my doctor. So they're going to know. If I went there for a checkup or mm -hmm. if I went there because I had stage three explosive syphilis, which I don't, but they would know, but they would know that because they, they pay the doctor and they see the codes and technically they're not supposed to tell anyone. But of course, you know that your insurance right. company people, your, your, the agents are sitting there. It's like, oh my God, John Smith, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's got, he's got genital herpes, put him on the list, you know, but, and the government, the government probably cares, but they are probably the last people to know about things. As we've seen throughout history, the government is the last to know, whether it be something as major as like 9-11 or because people knew mm -hmm. about it, like from the lower echelons. But government, the federal government had no idea until the planes were slamming into the buildings. But they also didn't know about stuff like, you know, they don't know when you're going to file your taxes. They don't know. And they, and they probably don't know then anyway. It's a machine. There isn't like a bunch yes. of government bureaucrats sitting around anymore with, you know, clipboards going, well. The clute has paid his taxes for the year. We'll send out his refund free front check promptly. Mm -hmm. it, well, who's doing that as a machine and the machine's going bloop, 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 bloop. And it doesn't give a shit if I'm a human being. Thank you. I have now a Hobby Lobby hanger pal. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna get pictures of these up at the end of the show. Uh, but yeah, but corporations are a construct. They're not people. But we have now given them personhood rights. And 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 quite frankly, the, the Supreme Court has said that their rights are more important than mm -hmm. yours as a woman. Yes. Because again, birth, the birth control options that they have gotten rid of, that they don't support, are not four, four of them. Right? They are not. One, it's based on faulty science because one of them mm -hmm. they say yes. that it's a, a, an abortifacient, and it's not. It's just a birth control. It prevents, it prevents the implantation of a sperm and an egg. The to, IUD. The IUD. Right. That's not that's not causing an abortion, mm -mm. and it doesn't even start. It doesn't even start, and I think you know I've always found the, the Catholic Church's position on birth control kind of stupid because it basically says that a thin layer of latex or a plastic device is stronger than the Lord God Almighty, 
And I think if God <laughs> wants to have you pregnant, if God is expecting you to be pregnant, then he'll he'll make a, he'll make a miracle happen that somehow yes. the condom will break or the IUD. I don't even know how IUDs work. I, I we don't need to get into it, but I know it's like something that gets implanted and it's stuck up there and it like is like a like a gun that shoots sperm. I don't know. <laughs> I, I that shoots at sperm. I don't know exactly what it is, but but yeah, but it's not. Maybe that would be. I guess if you if you consider that a if you consider that a sperm, like they all people who are against abortion mm-hmm. again and against birth control. They say that life begins at conception, at the second that the sperm fuses the egg. And I'm literally making a sperm fusing an egg uh, movement with my hands here, which is kind of uncomfortable. But, but, but they say that at that moment, that's life. That that's a human being equal to mom and dad and Johnny mm-hmm. and Bob and Susie and and Peepa and, and Mama. But what? Why? Why isn't the egg and the sperm? I mean, these are basically this, the components of life. So why aren't like every sperm and every egg treated as an individual human life as well. Where, where do you, I'm, I'm like, I'm making, I think I'm making some assumptions here. Where do you Forget stand on birth control and abortion? If I can, if I can ask you, if you want to, oh, if you don't um, want to answer, that's fine. Cause I, I, I take it. I think a lot of women do. And the, the interesting thing um, that I'll call out that I know, and this is interesting with Hobby Lobby's decision, not so much the birth control that they are covering, but what they're not. Um, that, there's a lot of women that take birth control for things that are not, they're not trying to have babies. I've right. known of women that were in their preteens, you know, getting their period and they had to take it because of the pain. Right. So it's not just. I had a friend of mine know. who took it because the hormone, the hormone balance yes. kept her skin from breaking up mm-hmm. and we're taking pictures right now. This should be filled with a Singapore sling. It's water and I'm not used to water right now. Sorry. I'll give you my recipe for a Singapore sling at okay. the end of the show. Um, Next show. No, at the end of the show. That'll be, a, that'll, be, that'll be the human interest story. We're talking about heavy stuff right now. That'll no, be... I was going to say next year I'll have one prepared. Oh, cool, yeah. I'll, I'll bring them. I'll bring them. I'll bring them. Make Excellent. A picture full of them. But, uh, yeah. So, these are not even really abortificents, which is really the concept of it. And I hmm. guess, yes. I mean, if, there's, if they're funding 16 types of birth control and they're not funding four, they're making a bad decision on the four. They're, they're using false science to make an uninformed decision, which impacts a lot of women. Mm-hmm. And that's... And it'll impact more if other corporations tack on. And that's that's the rub. Slippery slope. Because do you think... I wonder if the five men, Roman Catholics, would have made the same decision had it been, you know, Mahmoud's falafel shop. Mm-hmm. And he wanted women to be veiled while they, if they were working at his store. Wasn't it George Takei that talked about that? Was it? I, I think know. so. I think he mentioned something about that too. Um, if it was other right. religious, because and and the, the, I think Scalia that counter like countermanded himself because the I believe he come on, let, let's look that up real quick. Just look up Native American Church Scalia, but I believe that back in the nineties um, there was a, a court case where the. Uh, People who belong to the Native American church who wanted to use peyote for religious purposes, I believe that they were shot down. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, so, yes, we're checking uh-huh. that right now. This is the kind of things I should have had prepared, but I worked. I've been working graveyard shift, and I've just been exhausted. Yeah, and exactly. Here we go. This is from uh, uh, back from 1990. Uh, in a blow to Native Americans whose tradi- religious traditions predate the U.S. Constitution, the Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three on April 17, 1990, that there is no constitutional right to use peyote as part of a religious ritual. Peyote, which contains a hallucin- hallucinogenic drug, mescaline, which is just awesome, by the way, is a, I don't know, I haven't ever taken it, is a central part of Central Indian uh, religious ritual. The federal government and 23 states permit peyote to be used for that purpose. Um, so Scalia voted against... The Native American church, people who, who are adherents, uh, using it. And I'm trying to I'm trying to see his rationale for it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's, here we go. Scalia, writing for the majority, said that the First Amendment freedom of a religion does not allow individuals to break the law. We have never held that an individual's beliefs excuse him from compliance with an otherwise valid law prohibiting the conduct that the state is not free to regulate. So that is uh that's a real 
reversal for him because guess what? The birth mm-hmm. control regulations were part of a valid law, which the Supreme Court had already decided on, on the Affordable Care Act, yes. a.k.a. Obamacare. So if it's a valid law for one, it's not a valid law for other. He has basically created two standards, one for the Christ- Christian religion, and I would say one for everyone else because mm-hmm. I, w- I would love and I hope that there is a Muslim or a Baha'i or a Hindu or someone out there who presses this. And I, it would suck for the people who are going to be impacted by it. But I really want to see what happens when Christians are on the other end of the stick. Christians are, that's one thing I hate about, I, I call them, there's freedom lovers. Like, like if you order a pizza and you order Pete, uh, a, p- a pizza with meat, or a Pete, apparently, as I just, my brain called it. But if you order a pizza with meat, you, what would you, would you order a meat lovers or a meat likers? You'd order the meat lovers, right? A meat liker would be like, I like meat, but eh, whatever. That's what freedom, that's what Skilly is. And that's what a lot of the right wingers are. They're not freedom lovers. They're freedom likers. I have freedom, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. As long as it doesn't really, I, as long as I get what I want. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is. That's what this decision, decision is. And people like Kurt Schlichter who think that the companies are, are have the same rights as you and me, that's ridiculous. That's like saying, why doesn't Santa Claus have the same rights as I do then? Why doesn't the Easter Bunny? Because these are basically the same concepts. Santa Claus is a concept that we tell people exist. And eventually we, we believe they don't. Corporations are things that we tell people that exist. And they do. Corp- the difference in Santa mm-hmm. Claus and, cor- and a corporation is that a corporation actually exists. But it's still a kind of a made-up bullshit thing. I, I can't punch Hobby Lobby in the face. But I can punch the owners of Hobby Lobby in the face if I wanted mm-hmm. to. So the right, I think, extends to my fist hitting... And I'm not going... That, by the way, I'm not threatening to beat up the owners of Hobby <laughs> Lobby. What I'm trying to say is I can punch them. I can sue... I can... I can hurt an individual i can touch an individual i can stroke an individual's hair or punch him in the face those are the things that make up personhood personhood is not defined by the government personhood is not defined by a, a, a bill and then of course the people say well oh well, that abortion is murder because you're killing him no it's not because i i don't believe that a rapidly dividing cluster of cells has the same exact rights as i do when that same exact cluster of cells can get a mortgage then we'll talk when pe- when we can start giving mortgages to infants in the womb. Then we'll talk about them being that. That should be that. That's right there. That's the that's the that's the standard. I think. We tax the womb. We tax the womb. I think I think babies should be allowed to go into from from age zero to a hundred. At 100, 101, 101, I think people should be elevated. They should be free to do whatever they want. They could go on the slowest killing spree of all time. They'd be like, well, <laughs> they probably wouldn't be able to cock the shotgun when you're 100. You probably, you probably, that's when you have to probably switch to automatics. Just yeah. pull the trigger. Maybe a robot. If a 100-year-old person creates a robot that goes on a killing spree, I'm going to defend that. I think that's what the, I, I, I think the NRA would too. Because that's what, that's what we are. We're Americans. We believe in robot killing sprees and uh, pipe cleaner hangers. Which and and that's the that's the fuck of it. Preventing denying people birth control is going to lead to more abortions. More abortions. Yeah. So I think we need to accept that Hobby Lobby, as a, as a, as a construct, as a corporation, is a murdering psychopath. That they will have the blood of so many innocents on their hands that perhaps we should execute Hobby Lobby. It's interesting. They don't want to prevent it. Yeah. But you know. Yeah, what 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 is worse if you like if you I don't if you were a Christian. You may are a Christian, I don't know. But if you are, you're not. Are you an atheist? Baha'i? No. What, what? <laughs> no. We got a, we got a lamp. We got the, see the problem is that halogen lamp. I can't swing it into your face right now. To, to... <laughs> but no. But for whatever, if if you believe that life begins at conception, and if life has not begun yet, what is worse? I would say that abortion is worse in that in that mindset yeah. than than preventing preventing the implant. Right. I, I don't I don't I don't get that I don't I don't get people 
this is not so much a beatdown report today. This is more of like, a, I don't get the world. What what is what is with the world? I'm like I'm like an old Jewish man sitting at the deli eating his sandwich, going, "What is this? I don't get this world anymore." The kids with the <laughs> with the hippity hop and the the, the 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 TV and the sex thing. I didn't sex when I was back in when I met my wife. We didn't oh. sext. Uh, interesting. Do we actually. have a sex waiting for us? No, no. Um, I, I got an email today from Hobby Lobby. I still get their emails oh, really? for some reason. Yes. And uh, the tagline was, uh, girls have fun. <laughs> I, I'm like. <laughs> someone, and I'm going to be very vulgar here for a second. But someone had the great Hobby Lobby, like a great Hobby Lobby uh, slogan they could put up on. Hobby Lobby, just come on her tits. Because <laughs> that's really, Jen, she, I, you might Go be ahead. blushing a little bit. You might be blushing a little bit. Yeah, but, but here's the thing. That doesn't prevent pregnancy either. Well, no. Well, it does if you. I mean, really, is there like a like a transit route from the breast into the? No, I'm just saying it is. Oh yeah, as yeah, long yeah. As if you, you know, the, pull, the 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 rhythm method does. Nope. Although I will say, I've had success with it back when. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> when I was married. <laughs> Thank you, Catholic Church. You prevented me from having to pay a big check every month and having it. I can't imagine me as a father. I think I'd be a great father, but I just like it's like it would be like looking at a totally like alien version of me because because I just as as I'm now I'm child free. I'm happy about it, but I can't in an alternate universe there. There's Clute the father, and that freaks me out. That would be interesting, I think, and, yeah. and your kid could come in my classroom. Yeah, that would be fun. Are you getting? Oh, are you classroom? You getting in trouble for the show? No. Okay, good. Because I, I like I know that like sometimes school districts are like, so you were on a show where apparently you talked about this. They don't know. They don't know. Okay, good. I don't know. We'll, 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 there keep we go. Keep it on the DL. Keep it on the DL. So, what other things are going on out there in the world right now? Do we um, have? I mean, I I think that uh, we're looking. We have you know crazy shit like the potato salad Kickstarter, and the idea that people are or corporations are people. But we also have the, what's going on in Israel right now. Yes. And that. So if you're just tuning in, in the, for the last 50 years to the foundation of Israel, the Muslim states and the Jewish state don't get along. And they haven't since 1948. In fact, like I think like the day after Israel was founded, like Jordan and Egypt and Syria all invaded Israel. And Israel beat them back. Israel Israel is like, like the freaking Michael Jordan of, of religious conflict in the Middle East, because they've just scoreboarded the hell out of Middle Eastern countries. When I was in Egypt back in 2009, we had a, I had a tour guide, and he was very proud of the fact that he, he asked us a question as we're traveling through the Sinai Peninsula and we're crossing the Suez Canal, and he goes to the tour bus and he says, how many times has Egypt attacked Israel? And I think that's an odd, odd thing to say because it's not like how many times has Egypt defended itself from Israeli aggression, or how many times have is Egypt and Israel fought. It was how many times have we attacked Israel, which is I think an odd thing because they're very proud of the fact that they've attacked multiple times. And there was the two wars: there's the Yom Kippur War and the Six Day War, the the big ones that everyone talks about. And he was treating them like like Egypt had won. And I was like, no, I, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't, I didn't want to be rude. I didn't want to burst his bubble. But I'm like, no, the fact that we're the Sinai Peninsula is Egyptian right now is because Israel gave it back because your country promised to stop attacking them. That maybe you can say that as like a diplomatic victory, but Israel has beat your ass several times without breaking a sweat. And the, the countries in that area haven't learned their lesson yet. Now, I am not opposed to Palestinian statehood. I think the Palestinians did get a raw deal in the 40s that they need their uh, own own state. And they've got the land. They've got Gaza and the West Bank. But that's not good enough. And there's been... And Israel has done some shitty things. I mean, there's the Janine internment camps and there's, you know, the economic blockades that they do sometimes. And, you know... But what's going on right now is that there was these three Israeli ch teenagers that were kidnapped and uh, they were killed, which is a very sad thing. And if it, it, it 
what should have happened was that the Palestinians should have found the killers and should have brought them to justice, or Israel should have found the killers and brought them to justice. But what happened was Israel and Palestine didn't do shit. And then some Israeli settler, some these they've arrested six fanatics. They kidnapped another Palestinian a kid in revenge, and they didn't I mean, I don't know, actually, they haven't really listed the disposition of what happened to the boys who were the three boys who were killed, the three Israelis. But we do know what happened to the Palestinian kid. And he was apparently set on fire while he was alive. And after that happened, any when when the word when the sentence ends with set on fire while alive, the, the time for rational discussion has passed. And so what happened was that the Palestinians, the Hamas, let's be realistic, because it's not all Palestinians, but it is all it is Hamas, every one of them, who are basically firing rockets into Israel. Now, Israel has something called the Iron Dome, which is this missile defense system, which freaking awesome can pop out rockets like in the sky, like they're fireflies. And so the Palestinians haven't, they've injured some people and they shouldn't be firing rockets. And it's been horrible. You know, I remember there was a wedding footage of a family in Israel getting married. And all of a sudden, as they're giving the vows, all you can hear is, <laughs> and like rockets are exploding in the sky. My favorite part of that video is like, there's one guy who's just like, what are we leaving? I'm not leaving. I just, I, we're getting married today. I can't, I can't, I paid for this. I can't, I, I got them a present. I, they're finishing. <laughs> they're getting married right now. They're not leaving. But yeah, but, and so Israel has responded as Israel does with overwhelming force. And they have just been beating the shit out of Gaza and uh, the West Bank. Uh, and they were listing some of the targets that the Israelis hit. And what, what they say is that the Palestinians are storing rockets next to civilian targets, basically creating human shields, which, yeah, that's bullshit. The Palestinians need to be called on that. And But if Israel knows, I, I Israel can strike anywhere it wants. They've got the Mossad, which is the freaking best security agency in the world. They've got the Shin Bet, which is their internal, basically the version of the FBI. If Israel knows where these rockets are, I have to believe that they could get someone in on the ground to blow them up at the source. But I don't think Israel wants to risk really getting anyone captured, so they're just firing rockets blindly into into Palestine, hitting targets that are next to civilian targets. And because warfare is not an exact science, they've struck at things like an old folks home. And uh, I think they hit like a lot of civilian. I know the old folks home was one that struck out to me because, you know, that I don't, it's like you can't you can't you can't put a happy face on that. Israel's like you know, hey, we're sorry, you know, but this is a military operation, and if Hamas wanted to stop this, they could by stop firing rockets into us. But Israel wouldn't let it go. I mean, Israel the once the once a war machine starts, whether it's the United States or Israel or, or Russia or whomever, once the the gun has been pulled out of the holster, it's going to be fired. The question is how many times. And Israel has not shown in the past that they're willing to holster their gun after just one shot. So this goes back to the whole kind of concept of religious freedoms here in America. I know it's a kind of a weird thing. Because in America, support for Israel amongst Jews, actual practicing Jews, whether they be Reform, Conservative, or, or um, Orthodox, is actually pretty low in the sense of they don't believe, they, they support Israel's right to resist, and, and obviously they're happy that it's there, and they want Israel to be protected. But Israeli uh, American Jews don't have a don't ever cut Israel a blank check to do what they want. If anything, American Jews are more critical of Israel than probably Jews in Israel. Uh, American evangelicals, American Catholics are very invested in what Israel does. They fund. They get. They. If you put a poll question out there, it, does Israel have the right to protect itself by any means necessary? You would see the evangelical side could be like at 90%, if not more. On the Israeli Amer or the American Jew side, it would probably be something closer to like 60%, 50%, if that. In this country, Christianity wants control of everything. They want control of women through birth control, they want control of people's sexual freedoms, whether or not they can marry who they want to. And they want control of Israel. 
they're willing to let Israelis keep their own country, which is nice of them, I think. It's not like the Crusader times anymore where they just imposed a, a Crusader king and said, hey, by the way, you're all under the guise of Rome now. And that's the craziest thing when people do that. It happened in Mexico, too. The Germans put in an emperor in Mexico, Maximilian I. And I, I can't imagine how that worked. It's like Germany, the Kaiser. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, uh, the, I, can't, I can't do a German accent. Hello, this is uh, Franz from Hamburg. And now he is your king. So watership him. I, my, my German drifted off into Russian. But uh, yeah, but the Crusaders did the same thing. They basically went to this area where there was no one. Where basically Jerusalem back in the day was just, you know, a big city. But it was also kind of. Kind of loose, kind of out there. Jerusalem was like the hipster brother of the of the middle of the Middle Ages, and then they just import, put someone in there. But but American evangelicals, American conservative Catholics, need Israel to exist for one reason alone. Without Israel, there can be no second coming. On the day of when God, Jesus comes back, there's a whole like there's a whole set of benchmarks that need to be set. You need to have the Temple of Jerusalem rebuilt, and you need to have armies masking against Israel and then all of a sudden the Messiah appears and everyone gets to go to heaven if you believe in white American Jesus. And so as they're imposing their will on women with birth control or gays by trying to deny them the, the right to marry, gays and lesbians the right to marry, they're imposing their will on Israel. They're basically saying that you need to be a hard ass and they're giving money to groups. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is a member of the Likud party which is the conservative party, which is right now in power and has a very hardline stance against the Palestinians. Netanyahu is where he is today because of his support amongst white evangelicals, whether that was expressed through the policies of the Bush administration or whether it was expressed in the, the boatloads of money that are sent over to the Likud political party or interest in, in Israel. And it's a very dangerous road because we weren't... We, what else could the what else do Christians believe in? White evangelical Christians who want to impose their will. What else do they want to do? Well, they want to take science out of the classrooms. They want they want to they want to say that evolution is not a thing. It is a thing. I, we've already talked about it on the show, and we're going to probably do it again in the future because you people aren't listening. There's still people who don't believe in evolution out there. So I don't. They're trying to take away the dinosaurs. They're trying to take away the dinosaurs. I actually saw the craziest thing out of a creationist textbook. They claimed that after the flood happened, there wasn't a lot of food. So the dinosaurs, the surviving dinosaurs, dug their way into the ground. And then the holes that they dug collapsed on them. And that's why we find di dinosaurs in the fossil record, in, in, in the ground. That is some next level crazy. Because, you know, we put people in the ground all the time. I don't recall seeing fossilized I don't, you know. I have a hard time picturing a brachiosaurus digging into the ground. Exactly, a brachiosaurus, especially as a hole that big. Yeah, I like a smaller dinosaur. Sure, maybe that makes sense in some crazy ass. I I don't really think think through sort of way, but like the ultrasaurus, brachiosaur, you know, gigantosaurus. I mean, again, the name gigantosaurus kind of precludes it from being a a, a burrowing animal. It's a gigantic hole. Yeah, it's a gigantic. We we would know. But yeah, so they want to take <laughs> they want to take away science, um, and not just in evolution, but also in climate change. And climate change is a huge thing because they don't see if you believe the Earth is only five thousand years old, you discount evidence that's a hundred thousand old or two hundred thousand years old. Um, uh, you know, those are the kind of the religious things that they want. And I would also say that I mean, if you look at something like the Quiverful movement, which the Duggars, that like clown car of a family that breeds out of control they believe that you know you have to have as many children as possible because that's what god wants and they would do that on, i would, remember before before griswold v connecticut the the decision that allowed women to take birth control if they weren't in a married relationship people were breeding like rabbits i mean the country the fact that we have only gone from let's say there were only at 350 million people, which is still a fucking lot of people in the United States. It's not quite India or China. We're one third of them. But the fact that we don't have a billion people in a country that really isn't meant to hold a billion people like India or China. And that's no disrespect to the Indians or Chinese or anyone else who wants to start a large family. But that should be your decision to start a large family, not because of the government or, or your insurance company. But because of that, um, we... the birth control decision we have a fairly small 
country in relation to size. If they had their way, people wouldn't have a choice and we'd be much larger and they would be fine with that because then allegedly you'd have more Christian soldiers marching on to heaven. And that's not Christians need to give up that ghost. The United States look, look, look to Europe as our future. Our future is either going to be atheistic. I mean, you go to like France, you go to Sweden, you go to Germany, people, I don't necessarily know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but the people in Europe, they could give a shit about God. They're like, oh, God, okay, well, yeah, there's there's a church over there. Knock yourself out. Have some have some holy water and uh, wafers for me, because I'm not. I'm I'm going to the south of France. I'm going to Nice to bathe topless and, and drink wine and, and fuck everything. But and I love Europe for that reason. I, I like I always feel like I, I didn't I didn't experience enough of Europe. And by Europe I mean sex <laughs> in Europe. But <laughs> But what the Christians want to do in this country, they basically want to create a theocracy, and they're they want to, they're going to, they're going to do it by dribs and drabs. They're going to do it by decisions like Hobby Lobby, by blind worship of Israel. And I won't say worship, but blind support of Israel. They're going to do it by taking evolution out of the, the textbooks, and and certain elements of the government are going to reinforce them. If you have very religious people in charge of the Supreme Court. Scalia has shown that he is not a jurist in this decision because he made a decision back in the 90s and then 23 years or 24 years later, he's now reversed himself, contradicting what he said then. Only, and I, frankly, I think only because of his religious background. I I don't know. I, 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 I think, here's an odd question, mm. Jen. Yes. Do you think Barack Obama is actually a Christian? Um, I'm going to go on a limb when I'm not sure, but I don't really care what he is. Okay. As long as he's making decent decisions. Agreed. But I, I think personally, I think he's an atheist, agnostic or an yeah. atheist. And I think he uses Christianity because I don't think America is ready to accept a non-religious president no, yet. No. And I think it is because of people like him who I think does respect religious belief. I think he does. I think he's a live and let live kind of guy. I think he's like, you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. You want to be a Muslim, be a Muslim. He's lived around the world. He's lived in mm-hmm. Indonesia amongst Muslims. He's lived in America amongst Christians. He's in the Democratic Party, which is nothing but godless atheists, right? Am I right? Am I right, mm-hmm. right-wing America? Horrible. Um, but So he's lived in all these different traditions, and I think he... I don't get the I don't get a vibe from him that he's a... a, 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 a a zealot in the sense yeah. of, of, of even like the a low level person who would, who would believe in God, but it's people like him. It's people policy. They puts policies in place. I think that stop this kind of expansion toward theocratic Christianity mm-hmm. taking over the United States. And that's why, that's why I, people also cannot, people ask me sometimes like you never support a Republican candidate. And I'm like, true ish. I have voted for Republicans before, but I don't think that, I don't know. I don't think that I could vote for a Republican because right now the Republican Party is the party of the cross and the sword. We've got the RBG. We're good. Yeah. Notorious Ruth Banner, RBG. The notorious RBG. As long as you have people like her in power. And, uh, I, but I liked, I liked what you said, though, about Obama not you not caring because I wish more Americans were like that. As long as your religion doesn't impact me, mm-hmm. worship, worship Zeus. Go for it. Go for it. Worship my really crappy Hobby Lobby Hagger pal. <laughs> I'm going to put a picture up, which shows mine and Jen's, and then we'll see why women are the superior artists. Yeah, well, uh, Hobby Lobby probably lost at least, they, and that's the interesting thing. I'll finish. That's my finishing right. thought, um, that they sell to a lot of women, so there's probably a lot of women that aren't going to go there anymore. Mm-hmm. Hey, you bought like Myself. ten. You bought like what three dollars of the pipe cleaners at Michaels. That's money that yeah. Hobby Lobby could have had. I pr- I probably used to spend a good at least five hundred dollars a year at Hobby Lobby. Holy crap! I I do a lot. Of <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, that's a lot of. And I, I, and pop I pipe think cleaners. Joanne's and Michaels are going to win big from this. Yeah, I I know I've anything else. I, I went to Michaels recently to buy frames. I I always feel like weird when I walk into a craft store because I'm like I don't know what the, Johnny may be dead over here. We don't know he's he's got some sort of illness. He's okay. Uh, I want to walk a craft store. I'm just like, I, I don't belong here. I, I, I have no skill in any of this stuff. I, I can't paint. I don't color properly. You know, I, 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 I freaking 
when I look at a flower arrangement, I'm just like, ah, whatever. But yeah, so I don't craft, but I will never go to Hobby Lobby. And I don't go to Chick-fil-A, although I love their chicken sandwiches. I wish I wish Chick-fil-A was not a bunch of dicks. But, <laughs> all right, so I promised before we on the way out. Um, I promised my uh, Singapore sling recipe. Yes. Which is the same recipe as the Raffles Hotel in Singapore. So it is one ounce of, it's four ounces of pineapple juice. It is one ounce of gin. It is three quarters of an ounce herring cherry brandy. Three quarters of an ounce lime juice. Fresh lime juice, preferably. Because you can get bottled, but it's not the same. Um, It is a quarter ounce of grenadine. No, I'm sorry. A third of an ounce grenadine. third of an ounce grenadine. And there's a quarter ounce each of Benedictine and a quarter ounce of Contrano. And you take a shaker and you shake it up and you pour it into a glass. I prefer a tiki glass, but the traditional glass for a Singapore sling is a highball. And then you drink it and then you get drunk and it is wonderful. It is is the official drink of the summer, the Singapore sling, for at least this year. Is that official drink of the beatdown report? It is the official drink of the beatdown report. And uh, I think that's it. So remember, uh, check out our uh, webpage. You can see some of the links to things we talked about today. We uh, talked about uh, the potato salad Kickstarter, which I will not put a link up to because as much as I think it's good that he has money, he's got 49000 He has enough. Uh, we'll put up a link to the body. He's not an apology, though. And we'll have pictures of our pipe cleaner pals. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you want to learn more about Israel, uh, check your local library. Check Palestine, too, while you're there. All right. This was the Beatdown Report. Thank you for tuning in again. We, we're glad you're here because we know we took a time off. We hope we have not uh, lost you as a listener in our in our hiatus. We deserve some time off sometimes, though, people. This kind of quality doesn't come free. Takes time. Takes time. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, by the way... Um, if you want to donate to the Beatdown Report so we can continue providing you excellent podcasting for free for you, but not really because you'll be giving us money, go to the Beatdown Report page. There is a link on the left-hand side that says Donate Now. Links to our PayPal account. You can give us some money, which we'll use for the podcasting, for hosting, for any equipment upgrades we might need. Although right now, Johnny looks very happy with his equipment. Uh, so we'll basically pay for podcasting space and web hosting. Check out my new website, theclute.com. Uh, we're going to be putting up some blog entries and links and cool stuff, and we'll always have uh, information for you that we think you'll find enjoyable. That's theclute.com, run by Brick Gaming. Because I sold my soul to Brick Gaming to Bob long ago. Ah, uh, credits. This was the Beatdown Report with the Clute, produced by Brick Cave Audio. Sound engineer, as always, is Johnny Skinner. Our executive producer is Bob Nelson. Uh, live streaming provided by Ustream.tv Our podcast archiving is provided by Podbean.com uh, And our theme, sound, our theme song as usual is Powerhouse by Raymond Scott His royalty check is in the mail to his grave Alright, Beatdown Report, that was it Thanks for listening, don't forget to contribute and we will see you next, next time, time.